Here is a before showing you kind of how jerky it is. It's, it's hard to tell. You have to try this, these tips in your actual project and you're gonna see a massive increase, especially on long weapons like that. So this is after. Things are smoother and first off, I just wanna say this has nothing to do with my asset that you're seeing on the screen. This is completely relevant to just XR Toolkit regardless of what asset you're using. It's completely XR Toolkit. If you've been trying to make games in the Unity XR Toolkit, you have, may have come across that some of the items, especially if you're making trying to make a melee game, seem to do this. And recently I've figured out how to stop this. Don't know if it's the right fix, but I'll probably post this video up onto the forum and if it's if this video is still here in a couple days then there's no other solution at the moment but you can see especially if i'm rotating my hand it completely comes off the center position of where my hand is and the, the jitteriness is just not not acceptable when we grab this normal weapon you can see that the experience is very smooth the way it should be and let's take a look why we'll take the base item from unity it has two colliders, a trigger and a normal collider. One for the ray, one for the direct interactor. Let's turn gizmos back on so you can see the collider. All right, so when you add colliders to items, what that's going to do is change the local center of mass. And if we hop into, let's say the grab interactable, type in center of mass, you can see where it highlights in quite a few places, and that's what the Grab Interactable uses for its calculations. On this item, right, so if I drop this item on the ground, it's gonna be rolling around completely unrealistic around this giant collider, and that's ridiculous in virtual reality because you're up, and clo up close and personal with this item. If we go to this collider, the one that's really jerky and shaky, why is it messed up is because I put a collider on the sword, right? Because I want this object to interact with the world correctly. Made it co convex and it ruined my local center of mass. Right, you can see that if we just drag, right? The one that is not a trigger, if we drag it, you see the local center of mass changing. So if we played this now, this item is gonna be probably 10 times worse than this item right here, which only has the blade loft right next to it. So if we switch this to a trigger, you can see that it resets. So triggers have no effect on the local center of mass. But if you want to uh, get, you know, at attack collisions from, from the blade and not the hilt, Right, you don't want to have a giant collider or turn this whole entire sword into a mesh collider that's colliding with the enemy because you don't want to hit him with the hilt and have that do 100 damage when it should be doing 10 or 20 damage. So you want to have separate colliders for that thing. So you would want to attach a rigid body to this. So for your attack colliders, definitely have a rigid body. And then here you would have, you know, attack, a melee attack. In this way, that's going to prevent this XR grab interactable. If we turn off, make sure that we set this to is kinematic, turn off gravity. And then now, I think if I press play, it'll reset the, the center of mass. And as we can see, the local center of mass is zero, zero, zero. So now if we grab this item, it's going to function perfectly fine. And that's how you get around the jittery weapons is make sure that on your actual grab interactable that your local center of mass when you play is zero 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 if it's not you have a collider messing it up at least that's from my findings if you have a complicated weapon where you can't do that right in my project i have some pretty complicated uh, weapons where you're turning off and on colliders for different situations and for example, this rifle has multiple colliders all over the place so you can grab this weapon from any from anywhere 
and that needs to be assigned to this grab interactable. So I can't, I don't have, I'm not in that situation where I can put a rigid bodies on those colliders and center the, the local center of mass. So you can see the local center of mass is off. So I've created a script that fixes that simple script. Do I know if this is the right process of doing this to fix the situation? No, but I do know that it's working. So now if you pick up my gun and aim it around, it works flawlessly or at least close to it. So really simple script. This has nothing to do with my asset. So I'm showing you guys, whoever else is using the Unity XR toolkit is what I've done to remedy this. And I just have a reference to the grabbable and I'm listening to on select enter. And when I do that, I set to a new center of mass, which is, which is zero, zero, zero. And on select exit, I just reset that mass. That's it. I like to use on validate to get my scripts. So when you drop in, when you drop in that script, boom, it's populated. There's no guessing games about, you know, what you need, what you don't need. And if that's not the right item, you can go ahead and assign it yourself. If that smoothness is still not up to par, we can actually go up to project settings and take this fixed time step under time. Drop that to just point, even point one makes a huge difference, especially when you're moving around in VR, the items are gonna stick properly to your hands and not be this shaky mess. If you lower it even more, it, of course it's even better. I believe if you're using my asset, if you drop down all the way to point zero zero five, it will mess up some of the experiences, but you wouldn't necessarily be doing that in a production game anyway, because that really kills the frame rate, especially at 0 0.05. Another way that I know people have been, um, their performance issue is actually editing this script in here. If we go, let's see, gotta find the main, the main script right here. Process interactable on this update phase is this guy right here, right? This fixed and dynamic we go all the way up here let's find where this is coming from here we go right so if you are using is kinematic or velocity tracked one way people have fixed that is by this guy right here so this is running on the fix update so it's on the physics and if you just switch that to update that actually gives you a huge performance or not performance increase, it's probably lowering your performance since now that update is running every single frame versus only on the fixed update. If you change that to update, everything should be quicker. I haven't actually tried this, but I would imagine just doing that works fine, except for, I mean, clearly you'll mess up between these two. So maybe just taking these guys and dropping them right there because that's going to go to the, you know, the, right here and this is going to be called you know possibly 10 times more per frame and just make sure you delete the update and let's try this out but first project settings that fixed timestamp this whole process kind of nullified that that no longer matters so it's kind of one or the other and look how smooth that is i don't know if you guys can see that but insanely smooth so people want instantaneous to be working if you know if you have the opportunity to change their code to an update you can see how how crazy fast that is let's see if my if recoil still works wow that's that's ridiculously uh, smooth now pretty sweet So there you guys have it. That's how you can boost and fix some of the jitteriness in this in this wonderful thing. I myself, I can't change that and release it to you guys because that's part of the XR interaction manager that is directly, you know, editing something from the package manager that is not mine. Every time I would release an update, I would lose these changes. So every time you if you change these Every time you exit Unity, it's going to rewrite those. So if you actually wanted to make that change that I just did in front of you, you would actually have to... Let's go back to Package Manager. 
remove this interaction toolkit, right? Don't do it yet. And let me show you where you, what you actually have to do. Go into, uh, not packages, library, package cache. And you would take this, edit, cut, go to assets and paste that right there. And now that that's in your project, you can come over here and delete this. And then when you edit those scripts, it's now going to save. So that's the reason why I can't do that is because that's not the asset I'm selling. My asset builds on top of the interaction toolkit. But now you guys know how to fix it yourself. And when the next interaction toolkit comes out, you know, hopefully they've made some adjustments where, you know, we have that option without actually having to edit their code, maybe just a simple Boolean that we click.